Uh, last week we had, you know, one painter giving strategy advice to another painter just over the boiling the kettle in the kitchen. We have someone who was helping one of our theatre set designers has taken on a space herself for model making. We have one studio member who was gifted a pottery wheel for her 40th birthday and then went to one of the ceramicists for some uh, lessons and things. So um, photographers making product shoots for the people who design trainers. So these sort of relationships exist within the membership. Um, and it's really joyful to see this uh, growing as well as people are on site a bit more now. Um, yeah, just some websites of different studio members. How many here. members? More or less? More or less like 65, I would say. So uh, we have about 35 spaces, but Lots of people have a couple of people working, um, sharing a space because it's 24 hour access as well. People mm -hmm. tend to have different schedules. Perhaps somebody works predominantly evenings and weekends and the other is in the daytime and they almost hot desk between themselves. Um, we have this event space that I'm in just now. This is both used by our members. They have up to 16 hours per month free use of the space and it's used often for photography shoots and meeting clients and hosting workshops and things. But we also um, host it as a space to hire. So for public events, we have meetings and workshops, uh, product launches, exhibitions, conferences. Um, importantly, all the income generated from the hire of this space then goes towards supporting um, the building and the organization and keeping the studio rents affordable. And during COP26 recently, it was particularly busy in here. I think I have some photographs from some of the events. Uh, we had the Architecture Climate Action Network were based here. So sometimes the activity that takes place here feels quite related to the interests of our studio members. Um, previously, we had an exhibition program that was funded that Natalia ran um, with a, a gallery space called the Gallow Gate. Um, another project that we've run in the past here is Ross Street Markets. So when we have the, the better weather, we have these <laughs> uh, market stores that had been brought out onto the street front. Um, I wanted to put in one slide as a gesture to the uh, ECH <laughs> uh, community here. I feel like we have all these glowing photographs of beautiful weather, but we are in Scotland and um, we are in, you know, I think any um, organization, whether it's um, within the membership or in relation to the building, you face challenges. I think we're quite fortunate in terms of the membership. We don't have a lot of drama. People are really um, importantly kind to one another and supportive. But <laughs> of course, uh, we have fly tipping in the in the market area of people just dumping waste on the doorstep. We have starlings nesting in the roof of the building at the moment. Um, there are always these other things to consider. Um, looking forwards, this is our site um, directly opposite um, at the front of our building here. So it's predominantly used as a car park. Um, this is an area of land owned by the Scottish Power Energy Networks. They have this power plant you can see in the background. And we've just received some funding to develop a small pocket park on this area of land. It's, um, it is just a scrub of land, but we can see its potential as a sun trap here. Of course, what is the pocket park? This is a term used by the um, architects who are two of the directors. So they've been involved in a project elsewhere um, in the city to just trial out its large planters, some seating, an area to share your lunch. Um, importantly, I suppose, it's about putting structures in place which are solid enough that they're not going to get interfered with, but are effectively temporary. We're not going to dig up the tarmac. We're going to install some infrastructure there. Um, so this is a small scale project that we're looking at developing this summer to be able to offer some outdoor space. And there seems to be keen appetite for some gardening amongst our members. <laughs> our immediate neighbors um, also are soul food sisters who are um, a social enterprise of migrant women who use cooking and food um, to kind of address um, 
social isolation. So um, they often host events in our event space. And I think they're hopefully interested in this um, development of the space as well. Um, so then the other project that I kind of wanted to speak about and maybe get some insights from others on is Cumberland Street Station. So this is a site that we've recently undertaken a feasibility study on. Um, it's an old railway building beneath a live train line. Um, it's one mile roughly from our current site. It's just south of the city and there's a fairly um, a vibrant creative community also in the south of the city as a residential area particularly. Um, so the current status of the project is that we've just completed the feasibility study. Um, we haven't even made a press release for this yet. Um, we have this website that was, I'll share the links with you at the end, but um, we launched a website as part of the feasibility study and come sort of conducted a survey with local residents just to get initial views on the development of this space. So the building is abandoned, it's big railway arches. Um, there is one tenant in currently. Um, this website was developed for us by Submarine, who have the print shop on site, so almost in-house for us. Um, there's some beautiful animation to the title when you visit the website. Um, there's a kind of challenge to this project at the offset for us um, in terms of the naming and branding of this. So we've gone with this very um, simple graphic, the, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but in the top left corner, this, um, little logo is taken from the window grills of the building. So really just referencing the site at this point as we are still figuring out sort of how it will develop. But we have this title for our current organization is many studios and this could work as an umbrella term for having multiple sites <laughs> as many studios. But obviously this has become quite established with our current site in the east end of the city. And we're currently trying to decide what would be an appropriate way of developing this new site? Is it within the umbrella of many studios or is it that this and this would become this address, this would become this new address? So this is one of the things that we kind of early on have to clear up for ourselves. Um, as an opportunity, we have a real demand for studio spaces where we currently are based. We can't provide um, for everybody who's on the waiting list. We get a lot of inquiries for soundproof spaces, for recording studios, for larger spaces. So we're interested in opening up space that there's a bit more flexibility to these. This would offer a kind of flexibility for our current studio members potentially who want to upscale further, particularly perhaps people who work on theater set design and things. Um, and we've, I suppose, proven ourselves capable of running a space that is self-sustaining. So we're interested in this opportunity of trying a new site, working from sort of applying our learning from many studios. The opportunity of the space itself, um, its size, um, it, <laughs> these are Natalia's photos from a very early site visit, yeah. um, but it is a heritage site. So it's got a status that's quite different from our current building. Um, the opportunity of its sort of location and what it could be as a kind of public space as well. Um, we imagine that we would have some kind of cafe bar offer in this space, which in our current site, um, the only sort of public space is this event space. Um, so I'll just show you some photos. This is the floor plan. It's almost triangular and the train line runs directly across um, <laughs> the, the roof of this. And that's We've still been, active. The line is active, yes. Yeah. Um, not, as, not for passenger trains, but freight trains. Mm. Um, I would suggest anyone who wants to ask questions, I think it's like the right moment while we're still in presenting. Yes, mm -hmm. I think. If you want to like suggest ideas or add questions, I think I'll it's run through perfect. some photos to show yeah. you. This is the, I don't know if I can see everyone's faces. So just do jump in and unmute yourselves if you have a question. But it's, it's a very beautiful building. You can see so much mm -hmm. potential in it, <laughs> the light and the tiling. It has this wow. beautiful staircase here. So it's two stories. Um, the location is really different context to our kind of 
the barrows in the East End. Um, it's in this shaded pink area. So mm -hmm. it's it kind of is a site that would bridge from the kind of city centre East End um, and other sort of cultural spaces in the south side. And there's a new cycle route that passes directly past this. So it kind of makes a lot of sense as a site. Here you can see the train line that runs across the top. As a kind of comparative study in the feasibility study, you can see on the left side, we have the floor plan of our current site for many studios. Okay. And on the right side, um, the kind of studio spaces we can accommodate within Cumberland Street Station. One of the things we're thinking about is the kind of asset of the creative studios. If there's a more public aspect to Cumberland Street Station, how um, the visibility of the studios and that creative activity is in itself appealing and hopefully is something that can be kind of integrated um, within this. Um, yeah, Tal is also adding something here to the chat. Many studios undertook our first building development from 2013 to 15, so it's been quite a yeah. while, but the idea has been to use the existing building and our development history as a learning curve for this one. I think my point, Rita, was just that um, we really had no idea what we were doing the first time round, um, <laughs> and we were really guessing and figuring things out, and this time, I mean, we have networks like European Create Pub Network, and we have actual dedicated, brilliant staff like Rosie and Shireen. <laughs> um, so I think, um, yeah, I guess we're much more aware that um, there's an opportunity to learn together um, for, for the projects like this now. Of course. And, it, um, and also we have uh, at least one, uh, one member who was also started in the whose space was also in the railway station. And we have another one who's willing to join the network that I met this week, who's also in the railway station. So I guess we have a lot to exchange with. But I'm sure like, well, independently, we have <clears throat> other members with experience in like this kind of heritage buildings. Um, I'm not sure if any of them is here today, but feel free to jump been and remember by heart yeah this is my last slide, slide so i'll stop sharing but it's um yeah there are many things that we i guess as natalia says that we will learn from the current site and the previous development and then other things like it will be a completely different relationship with the landlord and with sharing this building with network rail and which spaces they will be responsible for the full structure and um, we'll be working internally, whereas here we have, um, yeah, relative um, responsibility for yeah. <laughs> the building. Just 